Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, today on the broadcast, we are going to be going back to a message that we started last week, and it's actually a part of this month's free gift offer. It's entitled, A Shadow of Heaven, and it's preached from the Christian Unity Revival by Calvin Ray Evans. We're going to be going to the remainder of that message today, but we ask that you would join us in prayers. We ask God to bless this program today. Father, we humbly come before you, and we uh, just want to ask again that you would pour out your Spirit upon this program today. We realize that we are separated uh, by miles, uh, by many that are watching today, but we're not separated from your presence. We are so thankful that the Spirit bears witness with one another. And we ask, Lord, that your, your precious Spirit and your presence that was felt during this Christian Unity Revival would just go into the hearts and the homes of those that are watching and listening today. Thank you for those that faithfully watch this program and faithfully support this ministry. We pray, Lord, that you would just continue to reach others and use this program today to win people to Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us. We in no way could ever adequately, properly thank you enough in the short amount of time that we have. But we're going to do our best to do that. Thank you for just who you are. Bless this program today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bow. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven, unstable land. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant
Well, this month we have an exciting gift offer to present to you. The message that you're hearing today, A Shadow of Heaven, is actually the title of this month's free gift offer. There's also another message from Calvin Ray Evans entitled The Coming of Christ. And it also has special singing from our dear friends, the Lore family. And this DVD and CD is from the Christian Unity Revival in Hayesville, North Carolina, at the First Free Will Baptist Church in Hayesville, where Chris Rumfeld is the pastor. And we've been holding on to this footage for a few months now, uh, just uh, anticipating using this uh, in the right time. And my, how God always puts it together. And we wanted to share with you these two powerful messages and also singing from the Lord family. It's absolutely free of charge, no cost or obligation to you. We take care of all the shipping and handling. All you need to do is let us know that you would like this month's free gift offer, A Shadow of Heaven. And you can do that one of three ways. The easiest way to do that is to visit our website at calvinevans.org. And right there on the homepage, you'll find a form that you can fill out. It's a very short form, just your name and address, and also ask which format you prefer, either DVD or audio CD. That comes directly to our office. We fill that order and we promptly return it to you as, as soon as we can. And we do ask that you be patient. It seems like a lot of there's a, some delays in shipping uh, right now, and so we appreciate your patience in that. But that's one of the easiest ways to order the gift offer. And then also uh, you can call us at 800 767 8713 and talk to our ministry staff and they will fill that order and then you can always write to us and request it. We'd love to hear from you. 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio 45662. Again, just ask for this month's free gift offer A Shadow of Heaven. Two messages from Calvin Ray Evans and also the Lord family singing on there and what a tremendous gift offer it is. And again, thank you for standing along with us. Calvin Ray reported last week on how God used you to bless over 8,600 families uh, just in the month of December alone. And my, how God has used you to help so many, not only here in the tri-state area of Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky, but all across this nation and around the world. And we're going to do our best to continue to do that, and we need you to help us. We need you to support this ministry because we want to do all we can before he comes back and before we're reunited with him in heaven. And so today, please, do your best to support Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, and I promise you, the Lord will bless you abundantly for all that you do, especially pray for us. That means more than you'll ever, ever know. Well, now let's go right back and finish the message from Calvin Ray Evans, A Shadow of Heaven, from the Christian Unity of Revival. Hebrews was written to Hebrews. These Jews that have now been enlightened and he said, you're familiar with the right hand. Every Jew there knew about the right hand. It is a picture of what is called the high Sanhedrin, the great council. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish people, was an assembly that formed from the days of Moses. You remember Moses? The work was too heavy for him. His father-in-law came to him, said, you need to set aside 70 elders that they can judge these matters. Well, that was the beginning in the eyes of Jewish people of God's ordination of something that's called the Sanhedrin. It is the place of high judgment or the high court. And the Sanhedrin was always known by Jews, the great council, the great senate, to have at least 70 people. There's a controversy a little bit in history whether it had 70 or 71. And here's the reason why. Some say that Moses said, as the great prophet or high priest, if you will, not in the respect that Aaron was the high priest of the tabernacle, but to judge the matter, he was the chief priest that was there and there were 70 others. Through the period of time, that, that great body, it would sway, not by God's will or God's design, but there were times where they would become very political and they become very social they become very secular. And when that would happen, the Sanhedrin would lose authority. And finally, it had lost such authority that it finally got to the place that it had no voice any longer and it was gone through the time of captivity. But we know under Zerubbabel, 
And we know once again under the rebuilding that took place of the walls through Nehemiah, we know through the prophets of old that again the Sanhedrin was instituted in the book of Ezra one more time. So the Sanhedrin is back. The Sanhedrin was here when Jesus walked on this earth. And basically it was this 70 or 71 people Now, as they gather together, we know there's some things from the Mishnah, Mishnah 2, that tells us a little bit from Jewish writings about how they would gather. They would all sit in a semicircle around the chief priest or the high priest in the middle. So here is the chief priest or high priest on each side, 35. Do you have the picture? They had to sit in a semicircle for two reasons. They're going to judge somebody. So when they sat in a semicircle, the two purposes, according to the Mishnah, there were two reasons for that. First of all, to their right stood the accused. To their left stood the person making the accusation, the prosecutor. And it's like a court of law. The second reason was every member of the Sanhedrin had to have a clear view of every other member that sat on that. They had to be able to look at them and see them. So this semicircle developed with the high priest sitting in the middle. Well, for years, many of you, you know that, you've been taught that. But did you know that there were also two other seats that were there? There was a seat on the side of the accused. And there was a seat on the side of the accuser. The seats were reserved for scribes. During the appearance before the Sanhedrin, the scribe on the left had one job and one job only to do. That scribe was to only record all of the things that the individual was accused of. It was a record of the accusation of wrong. They couldn't record any of the defense. They couldn't record any other statements. All that was recorded by that scribe for an historical record was the record of the wrong that the accused was being accused of so that they had a permanent record. That way if anyone ever came back and said, why did you inflict that punishment? They had a record as to why they did that. They could go back and say we were justified. Here's the basis of all of it. Here's the proof that they are guilty. Just like in our courts of law, we have someone that is there that records both sides. Everything that is said in this court, they had two. One recorded everything of the accuser and the other recorded everything of the defense or the accused. What defense did they have? Nothing about the wrong they had done. All that they recorded was the evidence that they were submitting for innocence. Do you have the picture? One is recording all the guilt One is recording all the innocence. I'm about to preach and you don't know it. They would finally, and different Sanhedrins operated different ways, sometimes they would cast lots. The lot would be sometimes a a white stone and a black stone. You've heard that, you've heard that presented as well. And when the high priest gathered those in, they had to have a decision that was that was in the side of innocence or guilt. No one knew what that was until the verdict came. And when the verdict came, the high priest would stand. And if that individual was found innocent, he would hand a white stone to the scribe on the right. And that meant he had been acquitted of all of the charges against him. He would then turn to the scribe on the left and command them to destroy all the evidence of the accusation, oh glory to God, of all the accusation that was brought against them. And the only record that stood was not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Can I tell you something? We have an accuser that remembers everything wrong we've ever done. But there 
is a high priest and as he sits in the throne room of heaven, he also sits as our scribe, our heavenly scribe. And when the devil stands on the day of judgment and says, wait a minute, I know every sin they committed. I know every wrong that they have done. I saw it all. I know it all. The high priest will turn and say, where's your record? And then he'll turn to that high priest, will turn to the scribe sitting on the right, and he'll say, I have no record of none of those wrongs. They're all gone. They're all washed away. Oh, thank God. If you ever rejoice, you ought to rejoice in the fact that your sins have been forgiven. It's good to stand here in this sanctuary tonight and tell you people may remember wrong I've done. The devil may remember wrong I've done. But I've got a heavenly high priest after the order of Melchizedek that he is also the heavenly scribe that has kept a record. And in that day, he'll say to the enemy, what sin are you talking about? They have been washed, they have been cleansed, they have been taken away by the precious blood that I offered as an eternal sacrifice for their sin. It's important that you see our hope lies in nobody but Jesus. Why do you think he says, don't rejoice that demons are subject unto you, but rejoice that your names have been written in the book of life. Heaven has a record. And on that record, it reads red by the blood of Jesus and there's no devil in hell that can overcome it. I'm telling you, we ought to thank God tonight that we're not guilty because of what Jesus has done. Isn't it good to know that we have been washed, we have been cleansed, we have been made whole, not by anything that we have done, but by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is our defense. He alone keeps the record. If you're here tonight wondering about all you sins. You remember them, but you can come for cleansing power tonight and the Lord can take it all away and change your life. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. (laughs) Not guilty. Not guilty. Oh, glory to God. I just want to shout it in the devil's face. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. They're gone. Our sins are washed away. We have a family in our church that their son was accused of a horrible crime that he did not commit. They were on vacation. He had a baby that died suddenly and the baby was in his care. The rest of the family had already left the place they were staying and he was watching the baby and long story short, the baby had other physical problems they didn't know about which was revealed later through autopsy, but they accused him of a crime he didn't commit. It started them down a horrible road that lasted for months. His folks had to take a lot of their retirement money, great sums of money, to get the best lawyers that they could find. Finally came the time of the trial I may not be totally accurate, I don't mean to mislead you, but I think it was around two weeks. Great numbers of people from our area, 
they had to go way out of state. Went and stayed the whole trial. They presented their case. His attorney presented his defense. Then came the time. The judge gives the instructions to those that's inside the courtroom. When I read the verdict, I don't want anybody to show any emotions or get carried away. The verdict stands. But Chris, when he said not guilty, some of our folks just couldn't help it. They had to praise God in that courtroom. Thank God for what he'd done. Sometimes I just can't help it. When I think that he has pronounced me not guilty, the judge of heaven and earth, the judge of the universe, says, not guilty. Do you have something that you can't get rid of? Something that's haunting you in your past? I promised you I wouldn't preach long, but I'm telling you, I'm feeling good tonight. Not guilty. Not guilty. We're here for one purpose, all of us that know the Lord. We just want you to experience the same peace that we are experiencing by knowing not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his abundant mercy, he saved us. Not guilty. Not guilty. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, morning souls of Calvary to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within. good to know that there's more to what we have than just these few days on this earth that we struggle through life. Wouldn't it be terrible to think all you do is work a job, live your life and die and that's the end of it? It's not the end of it. There's a destiny of the soul. Two places. The choice is ours. Jesus made the way for us to go to heaven. And I think that the more we talk about heaven, I think the more God uses us here on earth. I pray that you've been blessed and challenged from the Word of God today and that the Lord continues to use this ministry to help you. We want to be a blessing to you, especially if you're not ready to go to heaven. This is your time. Today is your day to call upon the Lord. If you'll call upon Him, He's near. And if you ask, He'll forgive you of your sin. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the promise of the Word of God. He's not way off. He's just a prayer away, waiting 
to hear your cry. And when you ask for forgiveness, he has power through the blood of Jesus Christ. And as he makes intercession, you can have redemption of your soul, forgiveness of your sin, and best of all, heaven. Heaven can be ours. We thank you for joining us today. I hope you join us again next week at this same time over this same station. Until then, may God bless you as our prayer. There is a name above all names, and it's wonderful to me. It's the only name that has the power to set my spirit free. Here's what we need to do. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him all the praise. Oh, I've got to stand and testify and magnify his name. There's no other name like Jesus. So greatly to be praised And I love the name of Jesus For He washed my sin away There is power in the name of Jesus He's the one who died to save us There's no other name, no other name like Jesus No other name Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.